welcome to Food System Talks. We have just passed uh, the Global UN Food System Summit, and therefore the discussion on our food systems is becoming very evident. Also in relation to the climate change discussion, it is in the focus how we produce, how we process, how we consume, what we consume, and how we are able to afford the food. So the idea of the Food System Talks was born to facilitate further thinking and discussion how we can concretely rethink our broken food systems. So what are the solutions? What are the pathways? And what are the ideas to solve the issue using very different perspectives? It's a unique year when the G20, the UN Food Systems Summit, and the COP26 are taking place. It is vital to reorient the assumptions of the society and to translate the new mindset change into a shared language. So when talking about food systems, it's not only food, but a complex system of relations between different actors, producing, processing, consuming, economically, environmentally, and socially our food. So food is nutrition, food is income, food is culture, and food is environment. The transformation of the food system must be guided by an integrated, holistic, multi-stakeholder approach in order to avoid distortions, to correct also distortions and inequalities, and to prevent that our way of producing processing, distributing, purchasing, and consuming our food will destroy biodiversity and contribute to climate change. So a multidisciplinary and multi-stakeholder approach is at the core of the UN Regional Task Force who organizes this call, the Issues-Based Coalition on Sustainable Food Systems for Europe and Central Asia. Let me turn now to our first talk. We have a special guest with us, Gerda Werburg, the UN Assistant Secretary General and coordinator of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement. In today's edition, we want to shed light on the role of nutrition in leading the food systems transformation guided by the action tracks of the UN Food Systems Summit, particular action track one, safe and nutrition food for all, and action track two, shift to sustainable consumption patterns. Gerda Verberg is the UN Assistant Secretary General and Sun Movement Coordinator since 2016. Prior to this assignment, she also served as Chair of the Agenda Council for Food and Nutrition of the World Economic Forum and Chair of the UN Committee on World Food Security. She was the permanent representative of Netherlands to the UN Rome-based agencies and has been the Minister of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality of the Netherlands. Gerda brings a broad experience from politics and international cooperation. Gerda Werburg in Geneva, welcome to this first series of Food System Talks. I'm pleased to have you really here on the discussion uh, today. Thank you very much. Happy to join you. So let me, let me begin uh, this discussion that we are focusing, uh, let's say, first on the food systems transformation. Every time we lift our forks to our mouth, we usually do it with uh, the blind faith that the food we eat is healthy and sustainable. But, uh, but less often, we think about our food in a, in a systematic or an integrated manner, looking at the origin, the seasonality, the, the carbon footprints, the impact on the, the planet, the social consequences, nutritional values, so this really illustrates that um, the complexity of the relations of the different actors who produces, process, and, and also consume uh, the food. Um, that's why we need a food systems transformation to address these issues. So one of the first questions, which I certainly would have to you is, 
How do you see the terminology of food systems uh, transformation? Do you think we reach the public uh, with this uh, term and the terminology? Well, it's not about uh, terminology. Um, it is about having the, con uh, the conversation and starting the conversation. And I think um, um, the one and a half year that we are now really uh, discussing the food system in order to get uh, our food systems in each country, a different one, get it uh, better nourishing uh, people, uh, safeguarding our planet and biodiversity and natural resources, while at the same time being available and affordable and creating jobs and a decent income. It's the first time that these packages are coming together and I am excited about it. Is everyone already aware? No. Should we think with every, um, uh, every piece of, of food we take um, about all these things? Maybe not. What we should trust is that our food is safe. But we need to ask the question about how is this produced? Do the producers, did the producers uh, get a decent price for it? And if is it doing well for my physical uh, health and well being and my cognitive uh, health and well being? And these questions need to be discussed with the consumers, uh, but with everyone along the food value chain. But I'm extremely positive about the movement that is already created in one and a half year. So if we, if we are taking this into consideration and we are heading now for the summit um, in two days or in three days time, um, where I would say the public wants to see results, right? So uh, in that sense, what progress do you think we have made already over the time? I mean, you mentioned already in the last one and a half years, we had uh, this discussion, but if we are think about the progress to improve the nutritional status for all, and where do you see major outstanding issues if we're looking at it from a nutrition point of view, particularly yeah. maybe also for the region? Yeah, I, um, I think the um, people don't look for concrete results already in a summit. What we should expect there is concrete commitments, concrete commitments from uh, coming already from uh, what I understand more than 55 countries who with their head of state um, um, uh, um, re representing the country will make concrete commitments on the pathway uh, of that country to transform uh, their food system and to serve these three important uh, goals. Let me, let me repeat them because each of them is crucial to implement all sustainable development goals. This is not only about sustainable development goal number two, but about all sustainable development goals. It is about uh, nourishing people, healthy, nutritious and affordable uh, food can be done much better. It is about uh, producing in a way that the planet is better nourished, uh, biodiversity, natural resources, less um, emissions, etc. And it's about creating jobs and uh, prosperity. Um, and this is so crucial and it's happening at the country level in the right way. And I praise all the initiators uh, and all people involved for their innovative approach, because in about 150 countries, the food systems dialogues uh, are on their way, not to be ended during the food system summit, but to continue. What is our, how is our food system in uh, Nigeria, our food system in Vietnam, our food system in Costa Rica? How is it performing? Is it really serving people? Is it really serving the planet? And is it really, really bringing uh, prosperity? If not, and very often, and in most countries, the answer is it's not serving optimal all three uh, goals. What should we do? What can we do together as stakeholders? What can we do together, led by the government, um, to improve this? And this is what is going to happen. Um, in the pre-summit, I was very positive, surprised, and inspired 
by the huge engagement of people from all kinds of countries. I think there have been about uh, uh, 17,000 people who have been listening in to all the uh, events. And many of them, uh, also many Sun Movement uh, members uh, from the countries, different stakeholders, but also government representatives, have told me, ah, we were so inspired by the examples uh, of other countries. So after the pre-summit uh, hosted by your three Rome-based uh, UN agencies, FAO, WFP, and IFED, they said, yes, now we get it. And now we will inspire our food systems dialogue uh, at our country level by the good examples of uh, other countries. So this is what I expect. I expect global players to um, commit their local support. So global players need to go local and align behind uh, the country needs. And uh, countries need to come up and make commitments um, that are measurable and uh, can really change uh, the food system uh, in their country. I'm very, very optimistic about it. Um, Gerda, let, let me, uh, on the, on the pre-summit, I, I also want to come back, but I want to have a quick uh, question here also, um, again, before, when we're talking about particular the issues of, uh, let's say, nutrition and obesity. Um, how, do, how do you see, and it, it's a one, it's a key challenge also still in this region. Uh, it's a key challenge in this region from Portugal all the way uh, to Vladivostok. How do you see on this nutritional issue, uh, the food systems can really bring a, a shift and what could be the entry point in, in that yeah. case? Because the, on the production, we talked about the production, we talked about also the processing, uh, these areas, but nutrition has also to do with the consumer. So how do yeah. you see, can we uh, here uh, make a difference? Yeah, um, it depends on where a country is. But when it comes to the consumer, very often um, malnutrition is a matter of awareness raising. Um, uh, take a country, a Sun member country as Tajikistan, where um, uh, women are overweight or obese, but at the same time uh, they have anemia. So it's a matter of, um, how can you um, educate people, starting with children, but throughout the whole uh, society, how can you educate people that by having a food, an, an, a food basket that is more diverse and is available, because let's not forget that it also needs to be available and affordable. People, people need to have enough um, uh, 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 money to afford. Uh, healthy uh, uh, foods, that is one thing. The other thing is marketing. And I think their food producers need um, and can do a lot, especially retailers. Don't forget that retailers, supermarkets, um, um, in their uh, advertisements, in their um, in, a, in, in television program, they are not always promoting healthy food. Let me put it mildly. So uh, the fast food uh, uh, um, uh, producers, but also the uh, sugary drinks, uh, drink producers and more producers, they need to change. And this, is, uh, this change will happen um, with a carrot and a stick. Make it attractive for the big producers to change their behavior. And if they don't want, use the stick, the, the stick of taxes or what have you. But also let's not forget at the producer side. When I visit countries and I meet with ministers of uh, agriculture and food production, too often they are talking about yield improvement and they mean um, yield increasement, uh, producing more. And they still think that if they fill the bellies, if they only think uh, calories, that they are doing a good job. What um, they need to understand and calculate into their uh, policy and investment is that by thinking a little bit more inclusive, um, you can do both. Because if your, uh, your crop are more diverse, very often they can also improve the soil. Very often they can also, um, you, the water can be re, re, uh, reused, they, you can produce less emissions, etc. So these kind of solutions go 
hand in hand, but they need to be thought through and discussed and um, uh, attract everybody to be uh, in because every player has to play his or, or her role. So decision makers need to understand nutrition is something else than filling the belly. Um, uh, food uh, manufacturers need to improve their behavior and consumers need to become much more aware and uh, learn that they can make a difference. So, th so that all actors in this case uh, think more about the sustainability. Uh, one, one, one point in this case, which I wanted to ask you when you particularly talked about, uh, let's say the retailers and, and also the processors, and you mentioned the, the country of Tajikistan, um, it, it's, it's an import country for many foods uh, items. So if, if you look into the supermarkets in some of these countries, you have a lot of products which are not produced in fact um, in, in the country, but they are coming from outside. So which means um, understanding you're right, we need to work more on the regulations here uh, in terms of already uh, from the government side to see what is imported and what is going to get into the country and what is not going to get into the country. So do you see for an import country here uh, an advantage in terms of regulating this compared to countries who um, have quite a, a, a high level of self-sufficiency um, processed food production? Well, it is, um, I, I haven't been thinking about this question per se, but what I know is that um, some countries have a private sector and uh, where um, uh, entrepreneurs are very motivated for on food fortification, let's say uh, yodium or, what, or whatever, uh, salt or um, uh, vitamins or minerals, uh, uh, etc. They are very ready to do this, however, if the import of the same stuff is not regulated and it is cheaper to have the import same stuff that is not fortified um, and thus um, less profitable for the health and well-being of people, um, there is not a level playing field. So very often we see that once you have this conversation with the government and um, um, support them in getting the system right, also when it comes to criteria for uh, uh, import, regulation of uh, imports, that the level playing field uh, can, can uh, be restored or there can be a new level playing field. So you see, Raymond, it's not easy because there are so many parts in the food systems that need to be thought through. So from my perspective, if people ask me where to start, I used to say every entry point is a right one. If you are ready to think, okay, what is coming next? What is coming next? What is coming next? It cannot be done in an overnight, in one overnight, but um, you need to be to take it into account. If people um, look at the whole food system and think that they need to start everywhere at the same time, and do everything in within two years, they will start to panic. It will be impossible. It needs to be a transition uh, over the years, but there are quick wins. And that is where we, um, this is a quick win, this uh, regulation, for instance, breastfeeding and having uh, um, um, a regulation that companies need to respect the code of conduct done by WHO against marketing of breast milk substitutes is an easy one because breastfeeding is the best start in life and it is, um, it's affordable and it's, it's, it, it's doable. So it's not always also very costly. Um, you can start with uh, quick wins and low hanging fruit. If you, um... You, you mentioned before, and, and on the Sun, uh, particular game changer initiatives, I want to also come back because um, the breastfeeding is certainly one uh, suggestion which uh, comes also from, from, from your side. Um, going, and, and I think the, the national pathways are hopefully in the long run, uh, giving the guidance to the countries to do, in, in fact, the right things um, in, 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 a longer, in a longer run. But if we are looking at um, the, the pre-summit, you mentioned several cases 
already what was very positive and also the positive atmosphere, um, the, what came out of the initiative. What in your views was a bit of a shortcoming in terms of the discussion in Rome? Or is there anything which you could think of in particular, um, if we are taking this now to Thursday, Friday to the Global Summit, are we going to be able uh, to still to balance this a bit? To balance this a bit, um, the balancing act will need to go to move on, to go forward, uh, Raymond. Why? Because this is a game changing uh, way of working. Um, um, as I said earlier, global needs to align behind local. And this is the most difficult one. And this is what we as Sun Movement um, with, uh, in, in, uh, are experiencing every day um, in, uh, in our 64 member countries. Why? Because the global players and the global companies and the global um, civil society organizations, but also UN organizations, are used to set their priorities at the global level and then drive their priorities or um, uh, provide their priorities to the countries. This is the other way around. Uh, and this is an invitation and an opportunity for every country to do it in their own way. And as I said, Mozambique has, a different, uh, has different challenges compared to Sweden, but they both have challenges with their uh, food system. My own country, the Netherlands, has big challenges with their food systems and their sustainability, but also with the nutritious nutrition of the uh, of the food systems. But they need to do it in a different way compared to um, uh, Japan or Cambodia or um, uh, Costa Rica, as I said, or Argentina. So every country need to do it from their way, and the global players are confused right now because they need to try to find their new approach. How do we align? Because we are used to uh, get global alliances, global solutions, and then do the global funding, and then uh, uh, make sure that we are able to support countries, which not always is leading to, to, the, is leading to the systemic solutions that we need. Very often, you see a project, you see a program with a begin and an end, but it is not owned by the people, is not owned by the country. So this approach is new to many players, but it's extremely encouraging. Um, and besides all the changes, the system in a country needs to change because the government need to commit to also invest in the change and uh, make the institutional, the policy, but also the legislation uh, regulations to get it right. So one of the challenges will be definitely to keep up the momentum after the summit. What we, what we have seen uh, in, in the quite a lot of cases is that um, there is a lot of action taken until the summit is going to take place. And then people say, OK, now it's done. Uh, while while the, the the process in this case is only going to start, yeah. Uh, in 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 fact, and uh, so uh, keeping this momentum at the country level and um, uh, let's say engaging uh, that the pathways which in many countries have now been also developed that they are um, been translated in concrete action and concrete policy recommendations is is definitely a, a, a challenge. And one one issue is probably that we are going to give great and clear game changers solutions. Uh, I, I think the Sun Movement, um, you are making suggestion, you mentioned already uh, the breastfeeding, um, which I, I think is, is, is starting really at the beginning of, uh, let, let's say the consumption uh, yeah. chain, if we take so. Um, what, why do you think some of the suggestions which um, from Sun are being made, how they are going to work or uh, in, in fact, why are these initiatives going to work? Okay. And why do they bring us in the longer run uh, to the change? Um, first of all, I couldn't agree more. Uh, the pre-summit and the summit are only a starting point. And for that reason, we can learn from uh, climate and energy that we need 
a COP system, um, a um, uh, uh, conference of the parties, which will not happen, but uh, not as uh, not in, in a huge system as the as the official COPs uh, are. But I uh, expect that the Secretary General will announce that there will be every two years a food system summit to um, exchange, inspire, learn, etc. In between, there needs to be um, a secretariat or a food systems hub um, that will be hosted uh, apparently somewhere in, in Rome by the Rome-based agencies, but enriched by other stakeholders and players, because this is not only about agriculture and food, it's also about health, nutrition, about uh, income, decent income, about uh, diversity, climate, etc., etc., environment. Um, so, and this hub needs to be very inspiring and need to be able, needs to be able to connect global initiative by, with local needs, because the global level cannot afford, global research cannot afford to lean back. Global players should be active and should be ready. But then the translation, the connection, the, um, uh, the brokering of um, um, uh, local country needs with the availability of global partners who can play their role will be a crucial one. And that is what the food system can learn from the Sun Movement. Uh, how do you bring the right uh, players together? How do you make them work together? And how do you celebrate um, uh, collaborative uh, successes? Because this is also a lesson from the Sun Movement. Success breeds more success. If you are working together with people you've never been working with, for instance, civil society with the private sector, to implement things and you are successful, not one of the parties running with the revenues and the other have been working very hard, but uh, left behind with empty, empty uh, hands. But if you are really creating success, celebrate it, share it, um, and then other countries will be inspired. So um, if just a few lessons uh, to be shared. And uh, the Sun Movement is very active in the country food systems dialogues. We will continue to be uh, to be so, and we will continue to say, listen, um, this will not be done in two years time, but within four years time, we need to uh, see the first uh, uh, fruits and some countries will be a front runner uh, in it and they will showcase and inspire other countries. I think one on the basis of what you said, in particular on the basis of the Sun uh, movement experience, um, the, the emphasis on the civil society and stimulating uh, the, the civil society participation um, in the entire process, I, I see is, is a crucial one. And uh, there we have, if we're looking at uh, particularly also our region, um, we have uh, probably also still uh, a discrepancy. And so how, how do you see, how, how can we able stimulate this more? Are we able to use the food systems approach maybe here also an, as an accelerator? Are we going to be able to achieve um, quicker results at the country level in order to have this stimulation? Oh, yes. If, if, if you're able to, um, to accelerate the improvement of food systems, it will have impact on health of people. It will have impact on education, on productivity, on socioeconomic development, on, um, well, go for it and you will see it um, on every sustainable development goal. So I think that nutrition, nourishing people well, but also changing the food system, uh, the food systems into the right direction is the engine for all sustainable development goals. Um, civil society is key and core. What I observe uh, is that at global level, um, uh, civil society organizations from time to time are hard to get. For instance, um, uh, civil society mechanism of CFS is still a little bit uh, uh, confrontational um, um, at the global level. At the country level, however, they are at the table. They are at the country dialogue uh, table. And that is where they should be, uh, Raymond. 
So what we do is encourage civil society to be at the table, to make sure that all uh, different parts of civil, of civil society are there. And we encourage them to speak up and speak out. Because that is another thing. Um, is there an equal, is there a power balance in the food systems dialogues? Do civil society organizations feel free to speak up and speak out? Or do they see somebody from the private sector being very important? Or do they see the authority of a high level decision making of the, of the government? And are they intimidated? As Sun Movement, we know that you need to uh, create an atmosphere around these dialogues where everyone is involved, everyone, everyone has an equal voice um, and will be listened uh, uh, to in order to uh, make their own uh, case. So you also need to have uh, good, fair rules to the games and not um, uh, parts of the food systems dialogues or partners in the food systems dialogues that run with the power. It's also an, an, a power balancing uh, act to get it done. If you get it done, it is so inspiring. I, I think in, in that sense, the, also the two initiatives from the Sun uh, movement point of view, uh, the, the women and the girls, as well as also the youth uh, for action uh, change, is, um, is, a, is a key element. Because when you talk about equalization or equal, uh, let's say, uh, being equal around the table in this discussion, then these um, actors, uh, I think, are, are key in order to drive also the change. Yeah, um, couldn't agree more. For women, um, it is important that men also take their leadership because um, we're talking already for decades about uh, equality, uh, uh, etc. And then everybody say, yeah, 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 uh, women need to be encouraged. But then they need to also have equal opportunity, equal rights. So legal rights to access land, uh, legal right to access uh, to get um, financial support, um, uh, extension services, uh, etc. So let's be serious and let's look at things from a structural perspective. And then, and I think, uh, Raymond, it is research that has been done by FAO, um, if women have equal access to all services and legal rights, then the food production and the, uh, the food production will improve and food losses will decrease. So it's a win-win option, but it has to be uh, done. Um, youth, um, too much. Um, getting youth at the table is not going further than lip service. Right now, we have a young generation that is ready to take also the leadership in the, ex in the execution. And we shouldn't only have them um, representing youth when it comes to the discussion, but also in the decision making and in the um, implementation. So we need more young farmers. Gerda, thank sure. you very much for having uh, you with us today. Very much appreciated. This um, was, I think, a great talk. We're looking forward to further action under the Sun Movement, and we're looking forward to further talks under these food system talks. So thank you very much. Um, all the best to you.